Hey up YouTubers, Simon B here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all keep it safe out there. It's a day after Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. I don't know what it is. It's, um, what day is it? Wednesday. Wednesday between Christmas and New Year. It's absolutely peeing it down outside. We're out riding yesterday on the 690 because the 350, I can see you behind me, is missing something. I was cleaning it, cleaning it the other day and uh, realised that the um, swinging arm bearings have gone again. We've done the rear wheel bearings uh, the other week. If you haven't seen that video before, um, I'll stick it up there somewhere. I didn't film that one because I've already done one, so the video for that is there. I'm, a, I'm halfway through this really, because um, last time I did it, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's one of those things that uh, it either goes, goes well or it doesn't. So we've got the swinging arm off, it's on the bench. We've done one side, um, so, so I thought, hey, why not? It's, now it's happening outside, need to get this bike ready um, to start riding it again and um, thought I'd bring you lot along. So if you want to know how to um, put a couple of bearings in a swinging arm off a KTM or basically any sort of bike really because they, they, they're all relatively the same, you know, just because it's on a KTM it doesn't mean you can't do it on your, your, your Honda CB500 because I'm telling you, they all have a pin that goes through them and bearings on the swinging arm, they're exactly the same. If you fancy a bit of that, as they say, stick around and Stay tuned. Like and subscribe. So as you can see, the 350 is um, missing something off the back end. It's missing its swinging arm, which is over on the uh, bench. So yeah, it's um, relatively. It's, well, it's, it, it's, it, it's rather easy to take off on the um, on the 350. You've got no linkage dog bones or linkage from your uh, shock. The shock goes straight to your swinging arm. You've got a swinging arm bolt that goes through there, which picks up the engine, back side of the engine, and the other side of the frame. And all you need to do is either take your chain off, drop your um, drop your caliper off. There's a couple of plastics, I think they're the worst things to take off really, because they've got a tie wrap on them. Sometimes I sort of pull that off and squeeze that off. The two bolts on there, you've got probably more bolts on the protection on the side of the frame, then you have bolts taking the swinging arm out because you've only got two, but you've got two on that, two on the other side. So anyway, it's, it's, it's relatively easy to check out. And like I say, it's got no dog bones on it. So you don't have to do anything with that. And um, if your chain splits, great. If it doesn't, there is a way of checking it out. You just take this off. Sometimes it's probably take easy, easier to take the sprocket off as well and take the chain with the swinging arm because you'll need to do that because it'll be connected to it round it so you just have that so you don't have to split your chain to take this off you can take it off with it so yeah this is a swinging arm on the um on the bench um we've already done one side which is that side there which is the chain side which is the which is the, the side that usually which usually wears in the first place because you're getting that much force down that side and it just keep bump 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 you know, it, 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 the force, it must be unbelievable, the force that's on that side of the um, swinging arm. And um, the bearings that came out with it, um, I have no idea why these things, why these things, why these, why, these, um, why these bearings were so dry. Even though when we packed them last time, they were, they, they, they were, they were fine compared to so this is this is this is the opposite side. Not really focusing on that, I don't know if it will. This is the opposite side, and it's and it's still got grease in. There's still not, there's nothing wrong with them, but because we've got the the kit um, while we're here, change them all together. You could probably leave them in because, but I don't know why that one was so dry. I don't use um, a pressure washer on this thing, um, especially in places like th that and on the back wheels and things like that. So I don't know, but. Um, yeah, they're in a they're in a fair sorry state. There's, you know, they're s absolutely bogging. That's this side um, seal, and as you can see, it's it, it's it's still got it, it's it's still got grease inside it, which is good. So pull these two bearings out, um, and then get them replaced. So let's get on with it. Eh? So I'm not really doing a step by step thing of how to do this. I'm just showing you sort of the basics and you can do everything else um, yourself. There's loads of ways of getting rid of bearings out of um, holes. Um, if you've seen the other video regarding the wheel bearing change, which was up there, which we've already told you about. Um, 
you can get bearing bearing puller kits uh, that pull them out blind things you can knock them out with um, punches you can knock them out with screwdrivers you can do all sorts of things um, this is a little bit different because it's in a bit of a machined area and there's two of them motion pro make a kit for this i'd love a, a motion pro kit but it's 130 quid you got to buy a kit for doing your suspension, a kit for doing your wheels, and a kit for this, and a kit for that, and a kit for everything else, and it just gets a little bit expensive. So you can use a bit of threaded bar and a, and a few washers and um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a couple of sockets. You know, you don't really need the expensive kit. You can buy them, no problem. Um, if anybody wants to send me one, um, fill your boots. We're gonna pull these bearings out. So what you need is a socket on one end, which the bearings will go inside of, because we're going to pull them into it because if it didn't go inside of it you won't get them out and that's a 32 millimeter um, socket so that's going on that side which is captive with that um, wing nut on the other side we need to pull we need to pull we need to push the bearings through to the other side and with that we're using a, a 21 millimeter socket so you have all these sizes if you have got a socket set to do all this stuff with um, so you want that just around the same diameter as the bearing. There's the bearing and there's the socket. So basically around about the same diameter. You could probably go to a 19 um, if you were bothered about it. But the 20, sorry, the 21, and that's a Halford socket 21. Some others might not fit. You might have to go a little bit down around about the right size if, if you didn't know that you can see you can put it in and say mm, yeah we can we can we can use that one we can probably not use that one we'll we'll, we'll we'll try it so that goes in first we have a couple of washers to stop the nut from um, going into the socket itself we've just swapped it a bit because the, um, the 10 mil 12 mil um, stud bar is not really um, up to it for uh, pulling it out so that's why you it, it, it's it'll push them back in but for some reason it just won't pull them out it just needs that first bit so this is um, a, a bearing removing tool so I've just used that with a couple of sockets um, and we've put that on and we've we're all right I'm just gonna warm it up again not too much Windy gun, really. So that's them both out. Because your socket on the other end is big enough to take the housing for the two bearings. These bearings from this side, I don't know if it'll focus that much, will it? Will it focus on them? You know, look at them. They've still got grease inside them, they're fine. Weird, no idea. Anybody knows why? As they say, comment down below. When you put the when they put the bearings back in, we're not going to use the 19, well, the, the, the 20 mil, socket because we don't want it to go through what we need now is a socket that's going to go in and sit on the inside of this recess i was going to show you that wasn't i forgot about that and you see we've got this 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 step this re recess so when you when you've got your bearings in you you can't see that there's that there's, there's that step so you end up getting a, a socket that just fits in the hole like that and you and you try and pull the bearings out, but they're actually what's that three mil smaller. Um, the whole thing, so it's a bit of a pain, and I don't know why. Somebody can tell me the design and why. If anybody can tell me why that's designed that way, it's probably to give a bit more meat around there. But I just make it the same size all the way through and put some um, smaller seals on the outside. I don't know. Somebody must know why. 
because it's it, it's just bizarre anyway so yeah so we need so what we're going to do because we're going to use a socket that goes into it and stops on that that because where we're going to push the bearing is on onto that face that's where you want the bearing so we're going to put one bearing first and then put the other bearing on the other side not pull them we pulled both out at the same time but we're going to put one in at a time this time all right yeah so let's get on with it so we're going to use the same or the similar sort of setup so we'll get the um, one of the bearings So we put them in the um, in the freezer. Like I said, it's all interference fit. So what you sort of need is if we heat that up and freeze them, we're going to get our it's just, just going to go in a little bit easier, really. Um, so yeah, you can put them in the um, in the freezer. You don't have to. It's not a, it's not compulsory, but um, you may find it um, will go on a little bit easier and go in a bit easier once you set these up. Before, before you tighten everything together, just make sure everything's sat square. Everything should sort of go in and be okay. And um, see that isn't. It's, um, why is that pulling like that? There we go. That bearing was just slightly not going in square then but because you're pulling square and pushing square because you're pushing square on this side because that's square to that and that's all parallel and that's square to that so it will it it, it will eventually go in so because that socket's the same size as the outside of there just make sure that you're not catching it on the way in and all you're going to do just like wind that into a point where it's going to come stiff and not move anymore which is about there and then that should be now seated on the internal face of, um, of your swinging arm as you can see it's now seated flat on the inside and that's how you pull your bearing into your um, swinging arm We'll drive the bearing back in on the other side. Um, we'll put all the seals in, show you what, what, what they look like, and uh, it'll be nearly ready to go back on the bike. All right, see you in a bit. It can be a complete pain in the butt. They're like a spring. They're like a, a, a spring bottom, but where you can see the different colour on them, um, it does have a chamfer on them, but sometimes these, this gets a little bit worn. I'm trying to insert that because it's that's a like three thou bigger than that all, and it and it, um, and it can get a little bit being a bit of a pain. You try and get them in square. One side goes in and one side doesn't and you need to basically get it in fully square and it and it'll it's like a it's like a spring seal and it'll all of it together I've just, I've just moved it and tried to get hold of it a little bit better because you don't want it to be moving. It was like it was moving within the um, within the vice. Now I've seen people do the same arrangement and pull them in, but I don't know if I really fancy that. I don't know. Um, this 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 technique does eventually work. It takes a little bit of. Um, I don't know if it's the best technique, really. Some people may, may, may tell me that I'm doing it wrong. Um, it just takes a couple of goes. And um, all of a sudden, they'll, um, they just go in. 
So I had it then, and I haven't. Why? There must be an easy way. There must be. There must be. There must be. There must be. See, that? and then it just does that. You get it fully square, and and it just goes home like that. It's bizarre. You could mess around with it for 20 minutes, and um, it just does that. Don't force. See, there you go. Look at that. Once it's once it's in square, it it it, it like a, like I said, it's just like a it's like a spring. Done. Beautiful. A bit easier on the other side. So now what we've got, what we've got to do, we've got this um, the sleeve that goes inside of the bearings that runs up run that the sleeve that goes inside the bearings that run on the bearings and then your swinging arm bolt goes through the middle each side of the sleeve that goes inside the bearings there's a cap that goes on each end one that end and one that end so we've greased the the internals so that goes in one side and then that goes in the other side and that's basically the um, swinging arm bearings replaced on, um, on the swinging arm so whilst you've got the um, swinging arm off um, you can check the, your uh, running components such as your chain guard is um, that wearing the last time I think I did this last year the we replaced the chain guard well the, the chain guide isn't it not really the chain guard because um, it was worn that much it was it was just coming through um, so that got changed just make sure everything's right what you could do is if you if you haven't done is drop your um, adjuster bolts out that you used to tighten your chain with just drop them out run them up and down with a bit of w, w, uh, GT85 WD40 re-grease them both sides have a clean up of it make sure there's no damage to it there's no cracks no nothing all the plastics and everything's okay. Take the other bearing that's on the uh, swinging arm, which is the shop mount bearing. Um, I do have another one coming of them. Uh, we're not doing it today because it's not here. It's probably never been changed, but the only reason I'm changing it is because I saw on the other side. I don't know if you better capture that. Just there. Uh, it's um, the seals actually coming out. So I'm going to change that. It's not. It's not a hard thing to do. It moves because everything moves with it so if unlike a normal bearing if it moves laterally um, you change it but this does move that way um, they don't really wear much but it's just because that that seal is, uh, is protruding on it I'm going to um, renew the whole lot so we need to do that so this now is ready to go back on the bike um, relatively simple really so stick it back on eh? so that's the Swinging arm back onto the um, 350. Just need to put the bolt in for the shock. Cleaned up a bit of the plastic. You can't really do much with it. It's it's it has been changed. So cleaned up the chain guide as well. Um, all in now. No play at all. The only thing that, w that worries me. Well, not really worries me. That bolt there for the uh, swinging arm bolt is 100 newton meters. What it does is basically pulls the full frame together because you, you can feel it, it. It's tight, 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 and then all of a sudden it must pull pull the frame together, pulls it all together on the engine mounts which are inside, and um, yeah, 100 newton meters. It's a fair thing, is that? Just got to put the mount in for the shock. As I said, chain back on, back wheel back on, everything. I won't show you how to do that. It's relatively easy. You should know how to do that already. Um, maintenance schedule once a year, twice a year. Take your swing, swinging arm out, re grease your bearings. I never did it this time, but um, I'm going to start doing it. While you've got it off, you can start checking things. You can start and check your um, your sprockets, see what, how we, what, what where you, how your sprockets wearing. Same as on your back. So you can check all this stuff um, before it all go, goes back together. We'll get everything back together, ready for another ride. So you got YouTubers, um, not a step-by-step -step instructions of um, how to put new bearings into a swinging arm, just more of a sort of 
how it all works together. Um, would be handy with a Motion Pro um, or a, a, another bearing kit to be able to um, take them bearings out and put them back in again. But you can make do with things, a bit of threaded bar, um, other stuff, a couple of sockets, it's all you really need. You don't need £150 um, Motion Pro set, but um, might be on my Christmas list for next year. I might just spite myself like I usually do, but um, I'm not really using it enough. If you um, watch it to the end, thanks very much uh, for, 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 for watching. If you did think that was sort of informative and sort of makes you want to go and do it, because at the end of the day, I keep telling you guys and girls, this is just undoing bolts and doing bolts back up. Get yourself a decent set, set, set of tools. You too, you too can do this at home. This is not rocket science. This is stuff that you can do. Need, need to take your time take stuff apart and as you take it apart take some photographs of it dead easy so when you come back to put it back and was there a washer there was there something there you've got photographs to show don't just take everything out and leave, throw it on the bench if i don't see you before i hope you've had a great new year because this will be out in the new year it won't be before then um if you're riding out there don't forget ride safe be safe keep safe thanks for watching and as they say we'll see you soon Like and subscribe.